Bob Arum calls Tyson Fury and Billy Joe Saunders, among others, advisor Daniel Kinahan, honorable. We're going to talk about that. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. Before I get started, make sure you click the link in the description to get TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a browser extension to help you level up your YouTube content. I use it daily. I use it on my YouTube. Started off at zero subscribers. I've scaled all the way up to 200,000 plus and counting. Let's go. Make sure you get TubeBuddy. Use my link. It does help the channel. Mike Coppinger of The Athletic. He has some quotes from Bob Arum. Bob Arum is talking about the whole Kinahan situation and also MTK and they're being sued by Joseph Jojo Diaz, old manager and things like that. So there's a bit of damage control. We're going to talk about it. So it says Joseph Jojo Diaz realized his Lexus RC350 was missing, repossessed by his old managers, even though he had already paid 29,000 towards the car. Why? Retribution, he believes. For bringing in MTK as advisors, that was just the start of an ugly battle that's heating up. Bob Arum is quoted with The Athletic as saying that Coppinger's old advisor, it says, the guy Ralph Heredia is a convicted felon and cheated the fighter and filed legal papers about Kinahan being involved with the fighter. Joseph Jojo Diaz, he's calling out Kinahan, give me a break. So the, the guy, the guy that's Joseph Jojo Diaz's old manager is suing and even accusing violations of the RICO law on MTK and Daniel Kinahan. And Bob Arum is basically saying that the guy is a convicted felon. So give me a break. How is he saying anything bad about Kinahan? The Athletic obtained a sworn declaration from Jojo Diaz filed with the California State Athletic Commission about the mistreatment he believes he received from Heredia's. California State Athletic Commission is set to rule on the validity of the managerial contract at an arbitration hearing this month. More from Bob Arum. Daniel Kinahan has been very honorable in our dealings. What he did before, what he didn't do before, fucking Don King stomped the guy's head in and did that stop King from being a major promoter from most of his career? What the F are we talking about? Now, this is a horrible take from Bob Arum, in my opinion, because he's comparing Don King, who's really reigned in the 80s and 90s in a different space. Like if we're if we're going to go that route, R. Kelly had hits in the 90s and number one albums right now, R. Kelly is in prison. So the world has changed. We live in a more PC and cautious world. So at the end of the day, Tyson Fury's advisor, Daniel Kinahan, and Billy Joe Saunders advisor, Daniel Kinahan, he's saying he's honorable in our dealings. But if you type a, simp a simple Google search, this is damage control all the way. A simple Google search, it says mob boss. Like just look at all the words. It says boxing might not be able to ignore Daniel Kinahan issue. So they did a, a series, like a docu-series called Panorama. And it's funny that Bob Arum would choose a random black fighter or black promoter who's not even really relevant right now, Don King, as a comparison. And that's like me murdering someone. And I'm like, yeah, but what about Helter Skelter? What about Charles Manson? What about Jeff Dahmer? Jeff Dahmer was eating, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does that got to do with two wrongs don't make a right? You see what I'm saying? So he's being attacked and under fire for this campaign of hostility. And there's documentaries that are saying he's a billion dollar drug lord trying to whitewash his, his past and get in the world of boxing and money launder and all types of crimes and executions and shootings and um, different things like that. And Bob Arum is saying he's honorable. So it's just, it's laughable because this is the same man that says Al Heyman is the cancer of boxing. Bob Arum goes in, cancer of boxing, Al Heyman. So we went from Bob Arum in 2018, you see the videos right here, calling Al Heyman a cancer and the cancer of boxing, right? To 
saying, who cares? Don King's in the game. Who cares what he may or didn't or didn't do? What type of attitude is this? I don't know if Bob Arum is losing his touch, but that's not the real world that we currently live in. Who cares what he did or didn't do before? And they're saying that his name and his gang and, you know, he's being linked to heinous crimes. And we're talking about Don King. Don King already went to prison and paid his debt to society. Look, Bob Arum, Al Heyman is the cancer of boxing. So you have a black advisor from Cleveland and he's the cancer of boxing, right? And this is the tirade that Bob Arum went on regarding a black advisor, Al Heyman. But then when it comes to an Irish reported gangster and crime boss and the leader of a crime syndicate, he's saying, oh, he's very honorable and bringing up another black promoter, Don King, stomping a guy, murdering a guy, basically. What does that have to do with it? And one of the weakest arguments that we've seen from old media regarding um, the whole Kinahan situation is this. The whole Kinahan situation, people are saying, oh, he hasn't been convicted. But they also said he's exiled in Dubai, which has no extradition treaty. So he's able to be there without being extradited back to Ireland. If he goes back to Ireland or the Republic of Ireland, then they may try to bring him in. Because if you guys have followed this case, this whole Kinahan case, there there's documentaries and um, a lot of authorities, Garda, etc., that are looking to close in on him, right? They're looking to, to close in. And after this documentary was created, they said people from the BBC, pause, their team was threatened after this program came out. So it looks like something they're trying to suppress the message and, and different things like that. And at the end of the day, Bob Arum is saying like, oh, he's honorable. The other thing you have to look at as a real boxing fan is Joseph Jojo Diaz. He's he signed to MTK. He has this um, deal with them, but he's also being sued by his old manager. And it says it's an ugly battle that's heating up, right? An ugly battle that's heating up with Joseph Jojo Diaz. You guys see it right here. A managerial contract will be under review and an arbitration hearing this month. So let's put this in perspective. You have American fighter in Joseph Jojo Diaz, former champion, and he's going to be given an arbitration, an MTK global fighter. Tyson Fury is another MTK global fighter who has nothing to do with Joseph Jojo Diaz, and he too is in arbitration with Deontay Wilder. So look at the commonalities and the common denominators. The common denominator is top rank, MTK, and said fighter, and legal battles and arbitrations. How come Errol Spence is not in arbitration and doing depositions for anything? How come Jamel and Jamal Charlo, who old media hates, is not in a legal battle with managers and legal battles with Wilder to um, enforce the fight and, you know, have an arbitrator or mediator declare if the, the contract is valid. How come Al Heyman is not being called a crime boss? He is being called the N-word by Golden Boy. You know, he did get called um, compared to Adolf by Golden Boy in an email with Golden Boy representatives and Ring magazine. He is being called the cancer of boxing and all that's wrong in boxing by Oscar De La Hoya, who sued Al Heyman, right? By Bob Arum, as I showed you in this video. So it's just ironic that you have a black advisor in Al Heyman who is single-handedly pointed out as all that's wrong in boxing and making cherry pick mismatches and things like that. But it's Tyson Fury and Joseph Jojo Diaz and MTK and an Irish, you know, advisor who is the person who is being linked to this this crazy manhunt <laughs> with Daniel Kinahan. Government must be more proactive in dealing with suspected crime boss 
Daniel Kinahan's involvement in boxing as it appears he has stepped away from the sport. But Billy Joe Saunders proved that was a lie and he hasn't stepped away from the sport because he says that Daniel Kinahan has put together all of his fights, right? So, you know, this whole situation is like a movie. It's getting crazy. And it just goes to show you the double standards in boxing. Al Heyman does anything. They say he's the cancer. But then when it comes to someone who's reported of heinous deeds, you have Bob Arum comparing some random promoter, Don King, who already went to prison and, you know, saying he's honorable and who knows what he may or may not have done. Like basically justify, it's just a bad take. You're basically justifying um, corruption in the sport by comparing and saying, hey, but Don King was able to get in the, in the business. But again, using my argument from earlier, R. Kelly was in the music industry. You know what I mean? There's a ton of comedians and Hollywood producers like Harvey Weinstein, uh, Bill Cosby. You have uh, a couple comedians. They're all under fire for hashtag me too and or said or similar crimes. That's like me saying, oh, but Harvey Weinstein was producing in the early 2000s. He was producing Hollywood movies. So does that make it okay? Does that make it okay because, you know, Bill Cosby or whoever, Harvey Weinstein was able to get away with whatever they got away with at the time they got away with it? No, it doesn't. So that's a horrible take from Bob Arum. And it, it just goes to show you, like I said, the double standard. Al Heyman gets called every name in the book and he don't even do interviews. Yet there's a manhunt in Ireland for this guy, uh, Kinahan, and you hear all the damage control that's available. You know, oh, he's not like that. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's coming out little by little, slowly but surely. You know, Bob Arum comparing Don King, like Don King don't have nothing to do with what, what Kinahan's being a cry, uh, accused of, you know, the crimes that he's being linked to. And again, it's one of the weakest arguments that you have people who are saying, oh, but he's never been convicted. I know people personally that have done felonious things and various crimes that have never got caught. You know what I'm saying? That have done whatever deed, bad deeds, and never got caught, right? The other thing with that whole argument is this, is you have to keep in mind that you can, he's, he's in a place where there's no extradition. You know what I'm saying? So if if he's not, he will he go in for questioning? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? So it's easy to not be convicted if you're also on the lam. You you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? And again, the common denominator is MTK Global legal proceedings, arbitrations, and lawsuit. Tyson Fury is currently in one with Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. So to be honest, this is just a terrible look. This is a terrible look because you have you have one company and they have multiple fighters and they're all being look Tyson Fury's dispute with Deontay Wilder remains a problem. See? So you have multiple fighters all in legal proceedings all with the same company Top Rank and MTK Global. I don't I don't see how this is is a good look. So we'll see what the arbitrators and judges decide and things like that, but they keep trying to do damage control and it's actually making it worse damage control like we know wilder's in arbitration with tyson fury there's probably a gag order where they can't say too much neither wilder nor tyson fury bob aram says that wilder has no legal recourse right he has no legal recourse but you're in a legal recourse you're in a subsequent legal battle with with wilder basically in a in a private court scenario which is still a legal proceeding you know, with authorized retired judges or whoever, right? So none of this is making sense. None of it's making sense to say Wilder has no legal recourse, but then he's basically trying to enforce a judge or retired judge to authorize a contract. And then yet and still you have Eddie Hearn saying that Joshua Fury is a done deal and is close and one more week two weeks we'll hear the contracts and have the fight announced and they keep putting it off and putting it off and you ain't even got past the arbitration of, of the wilder we don't even have an outcome for that so it's cap 
Let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Horrible look. We work. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Mm -hmm.